Hello and welcome back to AP Computer Science Principles. I am Professor Cunningham and today we are talking about compression. Compression in computer science is the act of taking a file and making it smaller. And I don't mean smaller like space-wise, right? This is all digital, it's all made out of bits. I'm talking about representing a, an image or some text or some other kind of file using fewer bits, fewer ones and zeros. Now, when we talk about compression, we usually break it up into two distinct groups, lossless and lossy compression. We're gonna start with lossy compression. Lossy compression is when you give up some detail of whatever it is that you're making in order to make the file size smaller. The loss of detail is permanent and cannot be reconstructed by some other computer using this file. There are some computer programs out there that have gotten really good at approximating what a lossy compressed file might have originally looked like. But again, if you use a lossy form of compression, you will not be able to get that detail back using the file that you create. Which is why photographers often save their pictures as very large files called raw files. This maintains absolutely as much detail as possible, and then the photographer can decide later in editing how much compression is necessary. I also think of lossy compression like perhaps transcribing hieroglyphics on a wall. If I was an explorer or an archeologist and I saw a bunch of hieroglyphics on a wall, I can't take the entire wall with me. I have to compress that down somehow in order to be able to transfer what I see out back into the rest of the world. A really lossy form of compression could be me pulling out a sketchbook and trying my best to sketch down the details of what I see. I might get the general gist of what's going on on that wall, but even if I was a very good artist, some of it would have been lost. So to summarize, lossy compression means removing some of the detail of a file in order to make it smaller and easier to transfer. Lossless compression, now that's a different story entirely. With lossless compression, the other computer on the other side can reconstruct the original file perfectly, but you're still trying to compress the file to use as few bits as possible. How do we do that? Well, here's an example. Now, here is the chorus of a song that if you're around my age or a little bit younger, we're all familiar with. As you can see, there are some words here that are repeated quite often, especially if we're talking about the entire song and not just one chorus. So if we wanted to take these lyrics and compress them down so that they're using less symbols, we could come up with one symbol to denote a word that is often used. In this case, the word hate came up over and over again, and we replaced the word hate with that angry emoji. Already, that one line is a lot shorter than it was. However, we do need to make sure we include a translation, a dictionary, if you will. We need to make sure that the computer is able to reconstruct what we originally meant. Those angry faces do not mean anything on their own. Somewhere in the code we have to put in, by the way, the angry face means hate. If we want to compress the file even further, we can do the same thing for play and shake. But here's something interesting. The word play in players didn't get replaced this time like it did for haters. Can you see why? Pause the video, see if you can figure it out on your own, and when you're ready, unpause it and I'll tell you the answer. Since this word is the beginning of a line, the P in players is capitalized. And remember from our video on ASCII and text encoding that a capital P and a lowercase p are not the same letter as far as the computer is concerned. A computer can't read. It can't tell what letter it's looking at. It's just taking a particular string of code and replacing it with another shorter string of code. This is something that's going to come up over and over and over again in this course, so I want to point it out as often as possible. Capitalization matters. I noticed the word gonna is in there a few times, so we can go ahead and replace that with an emoji. And finally, and I think this is pretty cool, we can even make a definition that uses one of the other symbols. For example, at the end there, I see, I shake it off, I shake it off. And especially at the end of the song, she says that over and over and over and over again. So if we could just take that whole sentence and make it one symbol, we could save even more space. So I'm gonna make a definition that this smiley face means I, and then the milkshake emoji, and then it off. Yes, I know it's a soda emoji and not a milkshake emoji. I'm doing my best here, just work with me. 
In order to determine how much you've actually compressed your file, there are two things you have to take into account. How many letters did you remove using this code and how many symbols did you need to teach the computer the translation? The dictionary up top does add size to the file and that needs to be taken into account when determining exactly how efficient your compression is. So quick summary. Compression is the act of taking a file and representing it using fewer ones and zeros, both for storage and speed of transfer. Lossy compression means irretrievably losing some of the detail of the original file in order to shrink it down. And finally, lossless compression is a way of grouping data together so that you can represent it using fewer ones and zeros without any loss of detail whatsoever. The big question to ask yourself if you're talking about lossy versus lossless compression is can I put it back together exactly the way it was? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. We're going to do a couple of Khan Academy episodes next. I'll see you then.